Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is REST API Top 40 Interview Question and Answer Series. This is the last part in this particular series, Part 4. If you have missed out on the first three parts, make sure you check them out. I've covered around 30-33 questions there already and the remaining I'll cover it in this part. Let's get started. But before we start with our questions, I'll request you to get your PDF copy of this entire presentation and the question answer series in a PDF format. You can get the ebook at arctutorials.gumroad.com. If you have any questions, write to me at surya.aradhyay at gmail.com. Thank you in advance. All right, so let's start with the first question in this part, which is list some of the tools that are used for testing APIs, right? One of the, there are many uh, tools that are available for testing RESTful APIs, but the most, I think, preferred for developers, at least, I think, is Postman tool, which I too use heavily. Um, JMeter, there's another tool, and there is a Catalan Studio that's also available. So these are some of the popular tools that are used for API testing. Now, the general discussion when you go into an interview, right, they'll start asking you about your approach, your logic, your way of thinking. So the first question they'll ask, they may ask you is how to secure REST APIs, right? Because they're not as strict as SOAP APIs, right? We discussed that in the last episode because SOAP APIs are strictly based on XML, whereas REST APIs can have XML and can have JSON. And their SOAP APIs are much more stricter than REST APIs. And hence, it's important that we secure the REST APIs correctly. Now, what are some of the good measures you can take to secure the APIs? For one, you should use a strong authentication and authorization mechanism, okay, like token system, injecting headers, certain headers, timeout, um, then ha there has to be a key that has to match with the provided one, and username, password, of course, there will be a strong uh, encoding systems in place. There will be validation, right? Any request that comes even with a valid data has to be valid, right? Uh, let's say a client makes a request with correct authorization and auth uh, authentication, but we still need to make sure that our data is sanitized properly. Otherwise, it can be prone to a lot of attacks, okay? Encryption, using l encryption for data security, right? Uh, there are a lot of uh, critical data and there is data that needs to be massaged and made it into a certain format so that it's highly encrypted and cannot be decrypted back easily. So that's where you secure the data. Rate limits, right? Now, if you see Google Maps, uh, Google API, or Twitter API, or YouTube API, Instagram API, they will allow you certain requests in per hour, right? You cannot just blindly keep on making requests or automate that flow and pull out all the data. You can't do that. All these APIs restrict you with number of requests per day or per hour and all that. So there is a rate limiting. That way you don't stress your server right if you don't put the rate limits your server will go down in no time again one of the last uh, things that you can also do is sensitive information can be removed from the uris right don't put any sensitive information which can identify the customer client or data or field or an object it should be generic it should be just an alphanumeric string of 28 for 24 characters or 33 characters whatever fits in your application so these are some of the best practices to secure the REST APIs. Take a moment to go through each one of them, make it clear in your mind so that you can answer them when they ask you. Now, what are some of the main uh, characteristics of REST, right? Again, we talked about this briefly in principles, right? We can correlate them here. REST, AP, REST uses HTTP protocol for all the communication, right? It happens over web internet, which runs on HTTP. REST makes server resources available via URIs, right? Every resource that we want to work with at the back end has to be have a unique URI. No two resources can have the same URI. REST is stateless. That means there is no mechanism of storing information about the past communications with the client. No history of requests or responses. REST uses get to retrieve resources from a server, whereas other web services use POST. Right now, that again depends, right? So you can talk about the HTTP method supported by REST. You can talk about some of the RESTful characters of API, like the design principles we talked in the previous part. So those things you can talk as part of the characteristics of REST. Uh, 
Now what is the difference between API testing and unit testing? Again important one uh, from a developer QA and full stack perspective. Unit testing is white box testing. That means you actually write code to test your logical function, methods, classes, etc. Whereas API is totally a black box testing. That means the person testing the API does not need to know anything technical. He will just pass the data that is expected and he will see an output. Right? Even for the data that is wrong, he will see a proper error message from the server. Whereas unit testing, we can run them in isolation. Right? We can test each pieces in isolation. Let's say my functionality has 10 features. I can write 20 or 10 unit test scripts. I can run each test script separately in isolation. Whereas API has to be a complete API testing. You cannot test only few fields in one go and others like that. So that's the main difference between API testing and unit testing. And that unit testing applies to both um, server side as well as the client side, right? At the server side also, we use Mocha, Zest um, to write or sign on. There are different frameworks that we can use to write unit tests for Node.js, Express.js, or any other backend um, uh, framework for that matter. But API testing will be done purely in tools like a Postman, Catalan Studio, and the user does not need to know anything about the technical aspects of it. What is a pre-request script in Postman? This is something that is often asked too many times. Uh, if you see the Postman, you would see a tab here. Uh, which says pre-request script. That means it's a script that runs before execution of a request. Think of it like an interceptor, right? Interceptor, what does it do? It Before making a request, it will do this processing, this job, and then make a request. So remember, whenever you hear the word pre-request script or something, that means a script that runs before execution of a request. This is a screenshot from my postman. So you can see the tab here. Again, you can put the scripts or the steps that you want to perform before you actually hit the send button. Okay. Now, how should we test the API security? Now, again, uh, there are many, many ways to security testing of APIs. Some of the things we discussed like authentication, authorization, right? Whether the user is allowed to access the resources. Authentication means identify whether end user is correct or not, whether he is um, legal eligible or not to access our system via username, password and those fields. Which options help to identify the type of API request? Now this is again a little bit more about HTTP request methods, right? Um, that will tell us what type of an API request it is. If you make a get call, that means you're trying to request data from the server. If it's a post, that means you're trying to submit data and create a new resource. Put means you're trying to update an existing re resource. Delete means you're trying to delete an existing resource. Now, those are the things that will help us identify what type of API request it is, the HTTP methods. Now, what are some of the challenges faced in API testing? Right now, there are a lot of challenges that I'm sure QA team can also add something in the comment section. But API chaining or sequencing of the API calls cannot be really uh, tested thoroughly, right? Uh, like for example, you'll first call login API, then it has to go to dashboard, from there it has to go to profile. There are three different API calls, but you cannot test them in sequence, right? You, there is no way to sequence them. Then data, right? Data is a critical thing for API testing. You will have some happy path with correct data, you'll have some negative path with some incorrect data. Now, those are limited, right? Because the permutation and combination can differ and it can really be a game changer because if you don't thoroughly test all the use cases with data combinations, your API can come down very easily. Now, if there are frequent schema changes, right, at the back end, then API testing becomes a challenge because you don't know uh, when the schema changed and what the schema looks like new one, what the responses should be mapped accordingly, etc., etc. Access to database, right, since API is more like a black box testing. We don't have any access. So there is no really cross checking of data response, right? You get a response. How do you make sure that, that the response is correct and expected outcome, right? So that can be a challenge in some scenarios where you don't have access to really database, etc. 
So list down any other challenges that you know in the comment section. I'll be happy to learn from you. What must be checked when performing API testing? Right? In order to perform an API test, you must check some of these. Uh, you can talk about accuracy of data, right? whether the response that we received is correct or not. Schema validation, whether the schema of the resource is correct or not. Check for the correct status codes that you're sending. If it's a 200 OK, it has to be 200 OK. It cannot be 500. Data type, validations, order, and completeness. Right? Then authorization, authentication checks needs to be there. Implementation of response timeout. That means I called an API which is taking too long. It should time out. Right? It should not continuously keep on waiting forever. Error codes, like a proper error coding has to be there. 501, 502, 503, 504 or whatever that error codes are. Non-functional testing, like for example, how much your API can scale, that's a really challenge. Uh, that's again, you need to put it under stress testing, load testing, and make sure your API withstands all that load. There's also uh, challenges and performing uh, for security testing, right? Um, making sure that overall your API test is secured, so we need to make sure that we put correct checks in place so that security is there in place and nothing goes out of sync. Now, what kind of bugs does API testing find most commonly? Right? Again, this is a, a generic question that can be asked to anybody at even front-end developer, QA, whatever. The type of defects that are usually identified with APIs are the missing data, right? missing or duplicate data in the response and you fail to handle the error conditions gracefully. Some of the conditions will fail and intermittently it will just fail without giving you proper messaging system or clean exit. Stress testing, uh, that means um, how much load can your APIs can take. That's another yet a critical piece of building an API. Reliability, security, unused flags, uh, unimplemented errors, inconsistent error handling, performance, multi-threaded issues. These are some of the common defects that you will come across in API testing, which are common, okay? As you start building APIs, you will run into some or the other issues like this. But over a period of time, you make them stable, you make them scalable, and you make them reliable. Now, there is another thing that I wanted to cover, which is often asked is, what are options in REST APIs, right? You would see uh, in the network call, you will see something called options call going, right? When you make a post request also, you'll see options. So what is that? It is an HTTP request method to fetch the supported HTTP methods, okay? So that is where um, it will give. First options will go and check what all HTTP methods are supported, okay? And then choose the options in the REST API. This is also used for cross-origin resource sharing, okay? That uses options and checks whether you are allowed to access that particular server and access get the methods. If yes, then make the post or get or put or whatever it is. So usually, you will see the first call going out is an options. And what does options do? It will fetch the supported HTTP methods. It, while some of the checks it will do is the course errors, right? Those That is checked in the options itself. I hope it's clear. If not, drop me a comment. I can add more content to it. All right, what are the common API errors that are often found, right? Um, some of the common uh, APIs errors that even I make still uh, are some of the missing module errors, documentation errors, parameter validation errors, so these are some of the common uh, errors that developers will make at some or the other point while developing. And that's normal, so don't take too hard on yourself. But be aware that these are some of the commonly um, uh, happening errors that you will see when you're developing it. Uh, let's talk about the documentation parts of it, right? We talked about API development, we talked about REST, we talked about HTTP methods, testing, Let's talk about documentation, right? What are some of the available API documentation templates? So I think most of the developers, at least in my career, I've seen mostly using Swagger, right? Swagger Docs, that's something that's uh, becoming an industry standard. Uh, a lot of leading enterprises uh, use Swagger to document all the APIs, their details, what type of REST method it is, what are the parameters it is expecting, etc. 
there are other things like flat doc api blueprint rest doc etc which does something similar which is basically documenting your api template all right that was the last question and that brings us to the end of this series a four part series i've covered around 40 42 uh, questions in the series i hope you have learned and you are now comfortable answering any rest based questions that we have covered and you will be able to crack your dream interview and get the job i wish you very all the best you can get the entire pdf copy at arctutorials.gumroad.com happy learning if you have any questions write to me at surya.aradhya@gmail.com thank you so much we'll see you again in some other series thank you